Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now you've probably noticed a change in tone in the introduction of this video and there is a good reason for that. The same reason that this video took a little bit longer to make than some of my previous videos. Over the past few weeks I've been reading a lot of comments not only on my own videos but on other videos and forums as well and it has made me think about my approach to all of this. Because somewhere along the line I got caught in the trap of trying to outdo myself week after week, building something more fantastic and more impressive each time. And in doing that I might have lost sight of the reason why I started playing Minecraft in the first place. I forgot to focus on the joy of playing the game that I love, the joy of building and the joy of bringing life to something that once only lived as a thought in my head. And without realizing it, playing Minecraft and making videos had become a chore. But today I aim to rectify that and once again enjoy the simple process of building. And I hope you do too. So if you were expecting something phenomenal and massive today, you are unfortunately out of luck. I'm going to spend this entire episode just working on this area over here. And I'm just going to make something beautiful. As I've mentioned before, I was thinking about making a lake here and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So first things first, I'm going to need to simply build out this little area over here. And then I'm going to add the wall for the lake on this side. And I just want to give it a nice little curve, make the edges pleasant to look at. And that means I need to do some shaping to this end over here. And I'm going to need to take away a little bit of dirt here and then see if I can give it a lovely little curve. That's a little bit too much, but that should look a lot better. Now let's just fill up this area. And there we go. It is ready for the second part of the process. And that is, of course, making it a little deeper because I don't think you can call a one meter deep puddle of water a lake. So we need it to be at least two meters deep. However, that presents its own problem because I was a little bit lazy and I only put one layer of dirt over this ravine. And that means we need to dig it up and then replace it with a new layer of dirt. So let's get that done. And now that our lake is a mind-boggling two meters deep, it's time for the water. I've got two buckets. I can just place them like that and then use the infinite water source they create to do the rest. But it's still a bit of a process and I'm swimming against the tide with every step. However, I'm sure we'll get this done in no time. And once this is done, we can do the top layer as well. And there we go, the bottom layer has finally been done and it's time to move on to the top layer. Now this thing is doing something a little weird because if you place two water sources next to each other, it's supposed to create an infinite water source between them. And as you can see, it simply isn't doing that. Now I assume it's got something to do with Minecraft hydrodynamics, but it does mean I'm going to have to place every one of these buckets manually. Let's go. And the water has all been placed and next thing I need to do is a little bit of terraforming. I've already done a little bit at the top, but right over here I need to cover up this monstrosity of a hole. And I think what I really need to do is make a sort of cave entrance here so that we can still get into the cave down there and then I can perhaps decorate it with some dripstone, some glowberries, etc, etc and make it look awesome down there as well. But first, let's just bring this out, match it up with the terrain around it. And there we go. That part is all done. We might still need to do a little bit of terrain work around the sides, but so far it is looking pretty good. And the main part of the lake is ready to go. And next comes the awesome part, which is, of course, transforming this boring little body of water into something absolutely fantastic. 
But to do that, I'm going to need a bunch of materials. And I am back at my warehouse because firstly, I need to stow this mass of dirt that I have accumulated. And then I need to decide what exactly I want to do with this lake. I already have an idea that's going to involve some mossy cobblestone, some wood. I need to build a bridge, of course, and I'll see what else I can find. And with most of my materials collected, I now need to do a little bit of landscaping over here. Because I want to make a road that will come from this direction. And that will lead sort of to the middle of the lake where I plan to build my bridge. And this is where the bridge is going to sit, right over here, matching up with a mushroom on the other side. But that means I will need to take some dirt off the top here as well. So let's just shave away a few blocks over here. But of course, not too much. And finally, I can start building the bridge itself. And I'm going to use some slabs. I'm going to see if I can make a nice little bridge curving up pleasantly over the water. And I think I want to make this about five blocks wide so there we go that's a good start i'm just gonna do half a curve on this side see what it looks like and if i like what i see i will replicate it on the other side so let's take a look at what we've got so far and that is looking pretty good so let's replicate that on the other side and there we go the full bridge curve has been built and i think that is quite a nice curve indeed so let's just get rid of the extra blocks and that is a lovely looking curve indeed i really do like it it goes up nicely on the side a little bit flat at the top and then a nice drop on the other side again however having looked at this for a while i have some concerns unfortunately i think that this bridge curves up a little bit too high which means it's going to end up looking bulky it's going to be out of scale and unfortunately i think that i might need to tear this down and try again so if you do like this, take a good last look because all of it is about to disappear. And it's gone. Now we start again and this time I'm going to do a little bit more of a gentle slope. So I'm going to go twice as long on the blocks here. And there we go. I think I've got it right this time. It doesn't go up quite as high. It's still got a nice pleasing curve to it. Not as nice as the previous one. But I think this is much better for what we want to do here. So let's get started on the bridge itself. But in order to do that, I need a bit more materials. And the main thing I'm going to need is some birch. Tons and tons of birch. Of course, that means repairing my elytra, repairing my axe. And every single time, this remains terrifying. Just imagine if these guys got loose. I don't think I would last two seconds. That is a lot of very angry piglins, but hey, they get the job done. And we're back and we survived the piglins, so we are back to collecting another ton of birch. And with birch in hand, we can finally start building our bridge. And I think what I want to do is just start off putting some trim on the ends, see what that looks like, and then go from there. I'm not sure this is going to look very good, to be honest. Because the slabs versus the blocks cause a little bit of a mismatch. But let's give it a shot. Let's see what it looks like. And then we can decide what we want to do. So I'm going to take it all the way over to this end. Let's just get rid of that one. And then we'll step back and take a look. And as it turns out, it looks like a certain famous redstoner's mustache fell off and turned yellow. So we're going to have to go with slabs. And the first thing we need to do is of course get rid of this and having replaced it with slabs makes it look a ton better however it has also pointed out another mistake i made and that is that if i add one block to both sides this is going to be too wide so we need to tear everything down that we just did remove one block from both sides of the bridge and then replace the slabs on the sides and we are done and it is looking absolutely glorious i really really do like the way that this is shaping up so we now have the bridge and it's time to do a little bit of decoration and i'm going to start with some fence posts because of course this bridge is going to need a roof so let's just get a few of those in there one on this side as well and then we can start adding the roof if i can click on the right spot there we go all right 
and that is looking not too shabby at all however i don't know if i want to add a solid wooden roof over the thing because i think that will just make it look clunky and feel a bit top heavy but i've got another idea and that is to make a living roof yes i'm gonna add some leaves i'm gonna add some moss blocks perhaps punch a few holes in it to give it some air coming through and then i'll also mix in some flowering azalea leaves just to add a little bit of color and i think this is gonna look absolutely fantastic but first let's get this out of the way that's better and then let's get this filled up to give us a base to start from and we've made some progress i've added in a few moss blocks but i think i need to disperse them a little bit better between the leaves so let's take out some of the ones on this side and there we go this is already looking better now the next thing i want to do is a little bit of decoration and for that i'm going to be using some birch fence gates and we'll add some up here as well and that is looking pretty good i ran out of fence gates but we get the idea and it seems that the pillager convention is in town because that is certainly a lot of pillagers and it looks like they're trying to steal my boats as well but fortunately i've got some gear locks on them so let's leave them be and get back to building now what i've done is i've added a little bit of dark oak to the sides just to give it some trim a bit of a different color of wood in here so the next thing i'm adding is some support pillars and i think about four of them ought to do it and yes that is looking absolutely glorious we've got our support pillars in we've got some moss hanging from the bottom of the bridge and we've got some lights and just look at that walking over the bridge to our mushroom is indeed a very pleasant experience and our bridge is almost done just one or two more things to do and i'm going to add a few red banners just to give it a pop of color and break away from the wood tones and next it's time to start working on the lake itself as you can see i've already used some bone meal to get some seagrass growing in the water and then i'm just going to add some sugarcane around the side just to give it a nice overgrown and wild feeling however it's going to be far from wild it's going to be beautifully landscaped and pristinely manicured but once again i need something that i don't have and in order to get that i need to head down into the okay not the chimney not the chimney oh my goodness this chimney is dangerous who would have thought that falling down a chimney could possibly hurt you anyway let's try that again i'm heading down into the mines because i need some string and the only place that i know of to find string is in the mine shafts now i thought i had cleaned out this mine shaft but fortunately i discovered that there are two additional layers to this mine shaft which i have not even touched yet which is very good news indeed let's just take care of this guy and with string in hand i was able to make what i needed and that is of course some brown candles because brown candles on some green glass makes a beautiful cattail and i really do think that i need to make a spider farm at some stage because my string supply is running very very low anyway let's uh let's place it in the right spot this time there we go and i think perhaps maybe what i want to do is make this one one taller than the one in front of it and then let's try and get our candle on top there we go and i must say these cattails really do look fantastic i'm gonna add a few more and that was my last brown candle unfortunately which means the cattails are done and just look at them they look absolutely gorgeous and with the cattails done it's time to start adding some rocks around the place and nothing better for that than some mossy cobblestone slabs and i prefer doing this with slabs because it allows you to just build a much more organic looking rock and with the rocks in place it's time to add some bushes and here we go one over here let's add a few more bushes over there and it seems that the pillager convention is finally done which is good news because i was afraid they're gonna bother me and i need to do some work the next thing i want to do is add some coarse dirt around the little path i've made here and eventually i'm gonna try and hook up this path to the bamboo farm at the bottom but first we'll decorate here 
And then the next thing I'll add is some lily pads and just look at that. However, I think the pond can do with a little bit more plant life. But that will have to wait for a minute because the next thing I want to do is build a path from the pond which links up all the way with the main road going to the village over here. And of course that means I am going to need to take down all of my dark oak trees. It also means that I'm going to need to do a little bit of terraforming in this area and that might take a little bit of time. So let's skip ahead and do this super quick with a time lapse. And the path is looking amazing. Just look at all the trees, the bushes, the rocks. I've got some grass growing. I've got some bamboo fences up here. And this is absolutely beautiful. And I think it makes the perfect transition from the hustle and bustle of the town to the tranquility of the giant mushroom back there. And just look at the pond. I've added some big drip leaf. I've added some small drip leaf. And if you look carefully, you might spot a fish or two in there. Overall, I have enjoyed this build immensely and even though it's not massive and impressive, it is looking absolutely beautiful. And of course the bridge with its little pop of red, the different shades of wood and the lanterns is looking gorgeous. And the living roof is just the cherry on top of a magnificent cake. And this bridge serves as the perfect gateway to the magical mushroom growing back there. And I promise one day I'm going to get the interior of that done as well. But unfortunately, it is not going to be today. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the time I have for this episode. And unfortunately, we did not quite make it to that magical 2000 day mark. Instead, we are currently sitting on... 1996 days which pretty much guarantees in the next episode we're gonna hit 2000 days and that gives us something to look forward to but i hope you enjoyed this episode as much as i did leave a like if you did and if you want to see some more and join us as we hit that magical 2000 day mark be sure to hit that subscribe button but this is fungosaurus rex saying until next time beautiful people Stay awesome. Bye-bye.